Stugatz, are you going to be tuning in all the time to Too Many Men, a podcast with Sarah Sivian, Allison Lucan, and Shina Goldman that has joined the Levitard and Fred's it's podcast? It's Shana. It's Netflix. Shana. And I'll tell you what, Dan, that's a fine. It's $5. I'll tell you what, I am going to tune in. Know, I know they're only doing four episodes a week. I'm going to tune in for five days a week. How about that? That's okay. how excited I am, okay? Okay. Yeah. So I should tell the audience, the newest uh, members of the Levitard and Friends Network are going to be doing not just four podcasts a week for us, during the hockey playoffs, and I'm not really sure. Maybe they can answer for us why we're starting this after the hockey playoffs have already started. Whose fault is that? Is that our fault or their fault? There's nobody's fault. You know, it's, it's hockey, Moderna, Sugatz's mom died. There's a lot of moving parts here. Yeah, man. exactly. I don't know what my mom had to do with it, but it feels like, Dan, the first round, it feels like it took an entire season. So I It's mean, so hard. Right, it's yes. so brutal. Yeah. Every game is in overtime. Every game decided by a goal. It's all crazy. I'm starting to wonder if Game 7 is still the best thing in sports when you have five of them in a single weekend. I okay. Mean, Are you guys already tired? Sarah, Allison, I'll start with you, Allison. Are you guys already exhausted and now you're headed into four days a week with us because the these hockey playoffs are exhilarating, but they're also unbelievably draining. I think we're unfortunately used to the cadence of it, right? Yes, we're exhausted, but for all the right reasons, if you wake up and you missed a game like last night's Dallas Calgary game where Jake Ottinger just plays out of his mind and you miss seeing that, you're going to regret it. So unfortunately, the hockey gets less and less as the playoffs go on. So you got to soak it in while it's there. Our yeah, exactly. The first round's the hardest. And how is it that you guys can explain to us? Uh, I don't know. I called her Shina, you said, Mike? I called her. You called her Shina, which, is, <laughs> look, I can understand getting Shina's name wrong the first time you meet her, but you called her Shina, which is a name I had never heard before. <laughs> so that's pretty impressive. But I've not heard Shana either, though, as a name before. Is that a common name? Oh, yeah. Uh, Shana is absolutely a common name. And you would hear Shana Goldman's name because you're talking to the reigning fantasy writer of the year. I see a twenty in there. I'm not certain that covers all the mistakes. Yeah, when you in, when you invent a name, the the fine should be bigger. You should put it on the poll, Guillermo. When I invent a name, should the fine uh, be bigger? But uh, Mike is sitting here eager for the Panthers, uh, Shayna, to play against Tampa Bay, and I don't think he should be. I don't think he should be that eager to want to be playing against them. I think that if the Panthers are going to move on and make an impact this postseason, they have to go through the lightning. It's one of those things like if Toronto is going to do it, they have to go through Boston. If, you know, the Penguins were going to do it or the Capitals, they had to go through the Penguins. It just works that way. And I think that the Panthers have a good shot if they play the way they did in the regular season. You know, the Capitals were pretty good defensively, I think better than we all anticipated after they kind of ran out of gas in the second half of the season. If they can play their rush based game, you know, they have a good chance, and it's going to come down to goaltending. And if the Lightning get playoff and consummate caliber Vasilevsky that they got in Game 7, it's it's going to be tough for the Panthers, but they didn't get that until Game 7. So maybe if the Panthers can finish it in 6, they'll be fine. They just don't want to go to 7 against Vasilevsky, rightfully so. Sarah, why is the podcast called Too Many Men, and why should people be listening to it? Well, two reasons. There is a hockey penalty called Too Many Men when there are too many men on the ice. And there are too many men covering hockey. So we are trying to change that. <laughs> and they're not covering it well. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. Wait a minute. Uh, what are you talking? None I'm of them? sorry, like, they're not. I mean, except all... for Steve Goldstein and Barry Melrose. Really? That's about it. The two yep. that you yep. know. Yep. Okay, so they're two they're not covering <laughs> and, it well. And, and Steve Levy, the Levy Lounge <laughs> leaves. I mean the, the, Goldstein is a gem. <laughs> thank you. See, Goldie. You see what I'm saying? Where do you come off People saying... People in hockey circles know Goldie, Dan. Yeah. Where do you come off saying that men are not covering hockey well? I mean, I just... I, I don't hear personally... I don't hear a lot of great analysis <laughs> from Mike Milbury. I mean, that's all I'm trying to tell you. Uh -oh. Is he still doing it? I mean... <laughs> Look, there's too many done. mediocre men, but that just wouldn't have as much flow. Yeah. So we stuck with too many men. We don't want to be insulting off the bat. Just listen to the podcast and we'll start insulting them, like, immediately. immediately. It's too easy to... I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Look around. You can open any publication and you're going to find a mediocre man covering hockey. You can go on Twitter and see bad takes flying around. <laughs> yeah. It's not that we don't have bad takes, but we don't have them as consistently as the men do. And we would lose our jobs if we had them more often. They don't. So that's the big difference. <laughs> So, so Stugatz is right. Yeah. So then uh, Allison Stugatz is right that men are covering hockey poorly. 
You know, I think it's an issue of complacency. And if we have to hear get pucks deep or grind it out one more time, I'm literally going to have my head explode. So it's about looking at things in a new way and looking at things through the lens of the world in which we live, not in the world of Canadian men from 1920. That's all we're about. It's very easy. <laughs> so what is the mainstream man getting most wrong about the media coverage? The way I can't believe Stugatz is right about yeah. this. Yeah. So we're going to say as a blanket indictment, men are covering <laughs> hockey poorly. Hey, Stugatz to- was right. <laughs> Holy Stugatz was right. Except for Goldie. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, Shana, though, you want to tackle that one, though? Because that's not something I've heard before. The idea that, uh, I mean, I know sports analysis can be dumb and it can, uh, and uh, sports fandom can be dumb. And it's not about grind it out in hockey, even though the people who play hockey are totally insane and do indeed Crazy. grind it out. But what are we getting most wrong? I mean, how much time do you have? That's the real question. Um, Look, it's just a matter of, like Allison said, it's complacency. And, you know, this is a sport that is very rich. You know, it takes a lot of money to play and it's very white and it's not very accepting to new ideas. It's behind all the major leagues for a reason. And that should change. It needs to be more inclusive, you know, at the grassroots grassroots level. It needs to be more inclusive at the NHL level. It needs more voices asking different questions and looking at things differently. There's more than just the final score sheet, you know, in every game you could have watched that Flames game last night and thought this was a close game. It was not. Like Allison said, it was Jake Ottinger making all the difference in the world while Calgary is putting up over 100 shot attempts. Um, But, you know, that's a nerdy way to look at it. And you need a calculator, not, you know, a spreadsheet, all those kinds of things. But no, the biggest thing with it is there, there just aren't new ideas out there. And There's so many things that men ask that we would get fired in a second if we said, I mean, did you hear about the whole pissy thing with the Oilers? Why are you so pissy? We would not have jobs. We would not have jobs. We'd be fired on the on the spot. But if you're a man, you can get away with that and you can keep asking stupid questions like that and waste everyone's time. So we're just here to push the needle a little bit more because, you know, hockey deserves better and fans deserve better. You know, the media just uh, needs to get a little more innovative and a little more accepting to things. And we're here to do it. I like this China. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) China, feisty. (laughs) Uh, uh, Allison, what are the storylines that, uh, that in, that you're following here that have you more, most excited Uh, the narratives in, in hockey that we should be following? Well, in round two, of course, not only is there, the much vaunted Battle of Florida that we're about to see, which I just cannot wait to see that. We've been waiting for meaningful hockey to come out of this matchup for years, right? And then the path didn't necessarily align the right way. So for this to be a meaningful series for these two teams at the point that they're at, insane. And then up north, you've got the Battle Battle of Alberta, where you've got Calgary and Edmonton, and Edmonton is just like narrative upon narrative of why they cannot advance. So you've got that whole historic narrative, plus the current Connor McDavid deserves to be on a different team because behind him, everything is crap. And then of course, most importantly, for too many men listeners, we have the battle of too many men, which is the Rangers versus the Hurricanes with my two friends here who are going to have their teams going up against each other. And how does that tend to go between you two? Um, historically, the Rangers have had the Hurricanes number, but recently the Canes are stepping it up. So I really think this is like a younger Rangers team, but you never know with a really hot goalie, right, Shana? Yeah, it all comes down to goaltending. The Rangers have the best goaltender in the world right now, and the team in front of him is not very good. So how much will he be hung out to dry and how much can he steal a game is what it comes down to. Rangers, Stugatz. Yeah. Rangers. I figured that's why you went to the Panthers game the other day, that you were trying to figure out a way to angle for some Rangers tickets. Well, no, I'm an Islander fan. So. Oh, I thought yeah. I just thought you wanted to Billy be around. I'm sorry. No, yeah. I just thought you, wanted, cat, I thought you wanted to be around all New York yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. No Rangers. You have no interest no, in it. No, I mean, if they win, perhaps. Uh, but you have like $500 this time. What, so what, <laughs> what am I being fined for here? I'm a Mets fan, too, not a Yankee fan, just in case we have a baseball podcast someday and someone asks, okay? Uh, but, Sarah, it seemed like you thought that the matchup between Carolina and the Rangers was a bad matchup for the Rangers, right? Like, you think Carolina's going to win that series and win it easily, correct? 
Well, as Shayna was saying, some teams just need to get through other teams and the Hurricanes just need to get through the Bruins. They haven't for the past two times and they finally did it. So now it kind of feels like more smooth sailing and they've beat the Rangers a lot. And I just think it's a bad matchup because the Hurricanes take so many shots and that's the game they play so they can get through the weak defense and get to the goalie. Allison, does it mean anything at all that the Panthers were the best team in the regular season? Does it mean anything? Is this all random, what what happens now this time of year, just total randomness everywhere? Well, you know, I mean, it, it obviously means something in terms of how they internalize it going forward. Honestly, as much as I believe in data and looking at the numbers, if that gave them the confidence, I mean, they had comeback wins in that series over Washington, and that's something they did all regular season. So if you can have that mental behavior, that mental training, that's going to condition you to feel okay if you go down early to this Tampa Bay team. But playoff hockey is so different and the games mean so much more. And Shana talked about already, you know, I'm suspect of Florida's defense. Their goaltending uh, has not historically, those players have not historically stepped up well in postseason play, regardless of how great they've been in the regular season. So it can give you some experience. It can give you some confidence. It's certainly a testament to the offensive talent that Florida has and Florida fans should feel good about that, but it's a whole nother animal when that new season drops. I mean, this is, this is a rush and all those stats and all that historical play, it's only seven games max and everything can go out the window depending on who has a good game, who has a bad game. It can turn on a dime. But Shano, who's best equipped for that change? Like when you talk, when you look at all the teams and you say, okay, now it's a different sport. Are we to just assume, well, the team that's done it the last two years is the team that's best equipped for it. In a lot of ways, they are. You look at the Tampa Bay Lightning and a couple of years ago, they were the best team in the regular season. They won the regular season by every single metric. And then they got their asses kicked to, you know, the Columbus Blue Jackets, which Allison covered firsthand. You know, they were the first people to say, throw out the narratives. It's not about that. But in so many ways, you do have to get over that mental hump. You do have to figure out a way to get over that hurdle. Just as the Toronto Maple Leafs, like everything affects the Leafs. This is something that does affect the Leafs. They're a team that can't get the, through the first round because of it. So if any team knows what it takes and knows how to grind it out, it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. And their first round series shows that, you know, they lost one of their best players in Braden Point and they were still able to manage because they got Conn Smythe caliber Vasilevsky. So they definitely know what it takes to get past it. Do they have the gas right now? That's the biggest question because... Their regular season play at time was a little bit suspect and in the first round too. And then they just lost Braden Point. So can they manage it against the Panthers? It's it this is the Panthers series to lose for so many reasons. You know, they're the better team on paper. But like Allison said, like it's seven games, anything can happen. We're talking about a sport that takes place with people skating around with knives on their boots, you know, flying pucks around at 100 miles per hour. Literally anything can happen. It's super slippery. You can, you know, there was a save the other night. Jonathan Quick is so far out of the crease and you can just see, you know, ice. You can travel on ice very far. Um, but for the Panthers, they have what it takes in theory to get past the Lightning. But the Lightning have what it takes to go all the way. And it def it definitely does count here. So we'll see, especially with the Panthers' regular season style. It's very much like live by the blade, die by the blade, because they play this up-tempo style, style and we're the best comeback team in the regular season. And that did help them in the playoffs. But when they couldn't play their game, there were times, you know, they were almost a goal away from being on the brink of elimination. So we can't forget that either. Sarah, I'm wondering, because the Leafs are fascinating to me. That's a very talented team. Sixth straight season, they've been knocked out first round of the playoffs. Like, what do you do? Where do you go now if you're Toronto? What do you do? You have to do the same exact thing. I know that sounds insane, but you can't make any drastic changes. And they're kind of handcuffed with all of their contracts. So at this point, you can't really do anything unless it's something really stupid. So stay course, maybe fire the coach. I'd fire the coach, hire Barry Trotz, yes. and that's it. Oh, my Trotz, God. No, the Islanders let him go. No, I cannot no, believe it. No, yes. the fi yes. fire the coach. We're firing yes. the coach. Yes. How, this how, is my podcast, Dano. Sarah, I mean. how, weird, how weird is it? I think I've got this stat right that the Tampa Bay Lightning are now 18 and 0 after they've lost that just shows resilience in a team that can win the cup multiple times in a row so that's scary that's terrifying but what but how absurd is that as a stat the idea that you would be playing playoff hockey you lose a game and you do not lose two games it's just not something I mean 18 and 0 when I I didn't know what I didn't have Alice in the perspective to put that against yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty spectacular, and, and we'd have to go back and look, but it's probably fair also to say that teams that are losing multiple games in a row are losing series, so they're not going to have a lot of longevity. 
But I'm with Sarah, you know, and Shana mentioned, I was able to cover when the Lightning lost to the Blue Jackets, it was a sweep. And you could see in that series, the Lightning literally, like you kept waiting for that energy of like, screw them, we're coming back, we're gonna show them who we are. And it, they were just gone, they were empty. And I think emotionally, mentally, they realized a lot of lessons they had to learn there. And so now that FU that comes out of if they lose, is completely encapsulated and it drives their talent and their production, particularly Vasilevsky and Net. And it's unheralded when you really think about it that they have not lost two games in a row. It's probably why in recent history they're one of the few teams to get two cups, let alone two cups in a row. I did a poor job of telling people who these three women are. Sarah writes for The Athletic. Allison is a Seattle Kraken contributor. She also does on-air work for Root Sports Northwest. And, and she sh fires coaches. And I mean. <laughs> Shayna is the athletic NHL and a contributor to Sportsnet. But, Mike, you mentioned, oh, I don't know what that award is, the fantasy, the fantasy Hockey Writer of the Year Award. Yeah, it's pretty descriptive. <laughs> there's fantasy yeah, hockey leagues, there's a lot of fantasy right? hockey writers out there Shayna is the best yeah. this year yeah. what happened last year uh, we didn't nominate I, I, I don't i don't know i wasn't you have to enter i guess for it and i didn't think to do it last year my editor told me to this year so i you know he said pick a couple stories put them in and i did it Shayna, listen to me take this the right way do it in the playoffs okay do what in the playoffs? Win? <laughs> it's a great question. Yeah. It's a great question. Oh, She's um, no, yeah. no, 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 like, that is the I, I perfect mean, answer. Fantasy writer of the playoffs. The perfect Pro answer. Season. He's just being it. Do it in the playoffs is just his signature. <laughs> well, it's a regular fantasy. season it's award. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We already had fantasy playoffs. That's over. They, uh, they do it with the regular season, well, so you, you have your whole roster. But if we're talking that way, I won both my leagues. Right. So, you know, I'm a champion. You did. So you did in the playoffs. Congratulations. Rings. More than Chris Paul. How about that? Congratulations. But everyone does. The Too Many Men podcast. Again, it is joining the Lebetard and Friends Network. Four times a week, you will have a hockey coverage that is a good deal better than ours. And also, Mike, uh, watch parties. Do we have any details for them on uh, for the audience on what we're doing? What are you laughing about? Sweetheart? Our hockey coverage is me wanting to take a bandwagon down the Sawgrass Expressway to a yeah, Panther game. Saying, <laughs> saying that, they do are you better, guys in? that they do better than us is not saying much. Yeah, well, it's looking like uh, Rangers Canes, given the uh, the personal relationships there might be one that we're going to do a watch along. So keep keep tuned to our but socials. How, how does this go with you two though and the fandom? Right, I, this is a new advent in sports where uh, reporters are fans of teams. Do you go at each other? There's no objectivity here, right? Like, do you uh, do you guys ride each other hard on this or what? Shayna, you're more of a Rangers fan than I am a Canes fan. I grew up in Boston, took this job, and then I was a homer last series because it's Boston <laughs> versus Canes. But Shayna, how do you approach this? I mean, I completely stopped caring about the team for like four years while I wrote about them because it very much became work. And this year is the first year I haven't really written about them as much, so I can like enjoy it a little bit more. But no, I don't look at it like I'm rooting for a team. I look at it like... I this job kind of sucks that out of you in so many ways. And I am far too like logical with it. And I look at this Rangers team and I'm like, <laughs> congrats, you made it past the first round, but you are a horrible team in front of your goaltender. So you're very lucky to be here. And I think that they're gonna get their asses kicked to the hurricanes for a million reasons at five on five. So, you know, this is a stepping stone for them. That's great and wonderful. I'm here rooting for a long series, a ton of chaos, and whatever's the most exciting to watch. I just want the most watchable series. And um you know, if the Rangers somehow make their way out of this round, that's awesome for them. But I would not expect it. And I don't know. Sometimes it's like w when when you're covering a team, too, do you want to be right or do you want to like have fun? You do have to like contemplate that a little bit. And it doesn't suck to be right because then you're good at your job. You want to be right. But, you always want to be right. Being yeah. right is having fun. That's the new yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. I just want yeah. to be right. Yeah. It's fun to be yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That is <laughs> our agenda. <laughs> and no, but for us, there is more pressure. Like we're, we talk about this a lot. There is more pressure for us to be right because if we're not, then it's very quick for any man to jump on and be like, oh, you screwed up here. Oh, you got that wrong when there are 100 hockey men who are wrong every single day of the week with their takes 
and there's no accountability for it. So there is a little bit more pressure if we were to say, not a little hey, bit you need more. an adjustment not, in the not lineup, a, not a little and bit it's more. totally wrong. A lot, of, a lot more. And You're lined up with me now, though. I got your backs, okay? So I will point them all out, <laughs> a, a every man, so, except I, for Goldie, I, 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 okay? A, a man who has made a career out of mistakes. A yep. man, a man who, but is, I got you. who sits on a throne covered in mistakes <laughs> <laughs> after the segment I just had, right? Yeah. After uh, the I wouldn't criticize I just anyone. had. I shouldn't be criticizing anybody. <laughs> they are better at this than we are, and you should listen to them. Too Many Men podcast. It is the newest member of the Lebetard and Friends Network. Four days a week if you want, uh, again, better hockey coverage than just a bandwagon moving down the uh, Sawgrass Expressway. Thank you, ladies. Warning you in advance, over the next couple of weeks, our show is going to go hyper-local here with some of the things happening in the playoffs. And we kind of got discombobulated during the round against the Sixers. There wasn't really a back and forth with Sixers fans. I declared war like a month ago on Sixers fans, and then it just petered out because Embiid wasn't healthy. And so we don't think that that deserves a rant. But a hockey playoff series win, Stugatz, Mm -hmm. for the first time in 25 years, a historic Admittedly, victory over an eight seed, but no reason to a ever, tough eight seed, man. no reason to ever rant about the Panthers. So, twenty-five years of no playoff series wins now leads to the highest honor that this show can bestow. Give it to me. Let's dust it off. Give it to me. Give it to me. No, give it to me. Game four, two of four. Five points, six fouls, game five, three of eight, seven points, game six, four of seven, 13 points, four assists, two rebounds, five fouls, and then game seven. Your masterpiece, <laughs> your absolute masterpiece. You should have taken a bow after the game. Four of eight, yeah. ten points, four assists, one rebound. Yeah. The only player to ever blow five, not four, not three, not two, not one, but five. Two nothing series leads in a career. Give it to me again. Again? I'm just getting started. Ever, ever, the first player ever to blow five series leads. Dan, when Chris Paul has you up 2-0, you know where he has you? Right where you want him. (laughs) It's only happened uh, to players three times. He's got four times and five times. He's also the only player... To blow four, not three, (laughs) not two, not one, four, two nothing series leads in a career. (laughs) Oh, for seven in game fucking seven. (laughs) That's real. That's a real stat. Oh, for seven in game sevens. Yep, it is. (laughs) Mr. Game seven, you are not. That's why they don't call him CP7. Give it to me again. No. Give it to me no, again. No. <laughs> this is unfair. Chris Paul. It's unfair. More like Chris Pale. All decade team. More like all decade team. <laughs> Chris Paul. You know what you'll be remembered for most? <laughs> Punching people in the balls, yeah. the package, the penis, <laughs> the dick, <laughs> the cock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, Dan? Yeah, I don't, yeah. No, I don't know. Please. <laughs> I don't know yet. I don't know. The schlong, Dan. No, you've really escalated. The Johnson. <laughs> Most known for. The Twiggenberries, Dan. Oh. <laughs> Again. You made it a cereal. <laughs> Twiggenberries. Delicious. Give it to me again, Mike. Give it to me again. Four stanzas? Four? You lost to Maxi Kleebler. <laughs> Whatever. Kleber. You lost to Nick Kleena. Nila Kina. Whatever. <laughs> you lost to Boban. That was an easy one. Reggie Bullock looks like he has a celery stalk in his hair. I just noticed that. CP3. More like... CP minus 39 in game seven <laughs> at home. Plus minus 39. Wake Forest 
More like fake forest. Oh, wow. That one's very clever. <laughs> the Deeks. <laughs> he just wanted, it was just a setup to get to the Deeks. CP these nuts. <laughs> what? You heard me. The schlong. <laughs> the twigs and berries. Give it to me again. No, not Give again. Give it to me again. You can't, you can't Dan. Do, how many stands? It's you? my rant, not yours, Dan. <laughs> you know what the C in Chris stands for? No. Choker. Yeah. You know what the H in Chris stands for? <laughs> no. It stands for holding his teams back. Yeah. You know what the R in Chris stands for? I do not. It stands for ringless. <laughs> you know what the L? I'm what sorry. To, what happened to the I? I'm uh, tired. I'm dizzy. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> the L? The, the P is PP, schlong, <laughs> twigs, and berries. You know what the I in Chris Paul stands for? <laughs> Did you go to the L? I can't see out anymore. I'm getting old. <laughs> I know the capital I presents problems on on a, on a keyboard, <laughs> but you, you were spell spelling out Chris. It stands for I got thoroughly outplayed by Spencer Bleepin Dinwiddie. <laughs> Give it to me again. No, no, you can't keep going. You know what the S and Chris stands for, Dan? I think I'm spelling it right. It stands for 17th season without a ring. <laughs> You know who has more rings than Chris Paul? No. Everybody, <laughs> including married people, but not you, Kevin Durant. Is Chris Paul not married? I have no idea. <laughs> the Pauls. He shouldn't be. If he's married, they should divorce him. <laughs> he should take him. Should... And so should the sons. Take his ring. The only person he ever gave a ring to. <laughs> Again. What do you mean? It hasn't even over I yet. I don't it's care. It's not even over yet. Twigs and berries. You're not done spelling his last name Penis yet. Penis dick schlong. Yeah, yes, Give it to me is. again. There it is. Dan, you know what the P in Paul stands for? I do not. It stands for poo. Wow, I thought it was P. Okay. It, it was, was supposed to be P-U, but I made it poo. <laughs> you also made an I Shit. and L. I did. The I. It's weird. <laughs> You know what the A in Paul stands for? I do not. Asphyxiate. <laughs> wow. You got that one what? right? Wow. <laughs> I talk really quickly. Occasionally I get it right. I get lucky. What does the U stand for? Oh, uh, the U. It's a good question, Dan. It stands for you are crazy if you think Chris Paul will ever win a bleeping title. You know what the L stands for, Dan? Nope. It stands for L. <laughs> Thank God David Stern didn't let the Lakers <laughs> trade happen. Thank God. Thank God I win. Guillermo, put it on the poll, please. An enraged Boban. Funny or terrifying? Cute. Cute, another <laughs> another option at Levitard Show. I don't think that's cute. He's the only one with the size and strength to appear in a John Wick movie credibly from anywhere in the world of sports because uh, casting him, even though the dialogue is going to be limited in a second language, he, uh, he looked the part in fighting John Wick, and I wouldn't want that coming after me. I don't know if you saw some of the photographs of Boban hugging Chris Paul yes. after the game, but his hands, it made him, it made Chris Paul look like a fourth grader because his hands were enveloped the, the head of a Hall of Famer. That was precisely the word that I had in my head, envelop. His hands envelop. I, I went to, I covered a Heat Spurs game. I asked for a credential while I was working at the radio station just so that I can go into the visitor's locker room. It was a complete waste of seven ninety of the ticket's money because I just went to see Boban. What? Like, I like I had in to. In person. Like, just the hands, the feet are extraordinary as well. Oh, yeah. you, you never see his feet, but it's unreal in person. How about his dick? We were all thinking it. I mean, was I just the only one? Oh, yeah. Dan, were you thinking about it? I felt it. You I thought. felt you felt his dick. Well, I, I, Let's I, hear I, that I felt story. the thought is what I meant. Um, I was wondering if. Well, no, no. <laughs> was anyone else thinking it? You guys gonna leave me alone here, huh? Is that really? That's what's happening. I mean, of his hands and his feet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyone? 
Uh, fine, I'm the only person that thought of Bo Band's dick. I mean, jeez. Give me a break. <laughs> Liars. I mean, say it, Dan. You were thinking about his penis. Like, it's big. It has to be, right? Proportionally. Say it. Please. I need somebody. I need anybody. <laughs> Say it to anybody! Somebody. Do you have the sound, Mike, back there? Do you have the sound of Draymond Green going back and forth with Kendrick Perkins? I do. Would you like to hear it? I would. Hey, mm-hmm. I, I, Draymond, man, let me let you in on a little something, man. Hold All on a second. Grin. Hold on. Hold on. I think it's good enough to end, even if it's a stray three minutes. Let's restart with something else. I think it's better as a... I don't have the transition and wherever the, the, the joke landed where it landed. So it's the, it, that could be the end of the hour, maybe. I don't know how long that was. It was three minutes. It Let's was just nothing. Come, we'll That's just, what I was we'll asking. Break and come back. <laughs> but I, 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 in my head, I was thinking as he was doing it, right, of, of it just him drowning being just a standalone. So that's how I was thinking. Oh, yeah, I was drowning. A, we close it, come back. It's, it's all right. We've done it before. Uh, the, the sound I need, I need uh, Draymond sound first before the Perkins sound. You want that sound, right? All right. Come back for a four minute Draymond Kendrick Perkins segment here. Whether people find him polarizing or not, Stugatz, I really do love that Draymond Green is not afraid to stick his face in every buzz buzzsaw. You have not seen a lot of athletes like this who are this comfortable in their prime just battering heads with whomever. And so in a post-game press conference after they defeated Memphis to extinguish Memphis season, uh, Draymond was mad at Kendrick Perkins because of some things that Kendrick Perkins said on ESPN. And this is what Draymond had to say. You got a big ogre on TV talking about what Draymond say ain't the gospel. It is the gospel. What I say is the gospel. And, you know, when you say that multiple times, like on, on several different segments, you must think what I say to gospel. You know, when, when, when you got people out there just talking out the side of their neck, you know, or anybody can make the pass Draymond make, like that's just stupid. I mean, like, these are people who get employed to talk on TV about our game. And anybody can make that pass. You make that pass. We would love to see it. I, I played against the guy, by the way. I'm talking about Kendrick Perkins for those of y'all that don't know. I, I'm never ducking no smoke. As the Memphis Grizzly towels say, I don't duck smoke. Anybody can make their pass. Like, you couldn't. So, <laughs> good luck. Perk, of course, was not having that. And uh, I suppose we should enjoy the back and forth. This is the genius of Draymond Green because he has a podcast. And so he's baiting Perk into a, a discussion. Uh, and he knows Perk's going to respond on ESPN and continue to promote Draymond Green and his podcast because uh, Draymond's doing it while he's playing and it's very smart. Well, Kendrick took immediately to social media. He didn't even give ESPN this content, Dan. Hey, hey Draymond, man, let me let you in on a little something, man. All that ogre and all that, whatever you say I look like, man, you ain't cute. You ain't handsome. Man, you better thank that NBA logo. You better thank Jerry West. Man, I've been with my wife since the 10th grade. <laughs> Down piece. Before the NBA stuff, so don't get it all twisted and all that, whatever you got to say. And at the end of the day, hey, man, look, I can say what the f*** I want to say when I want to say it. And I'm going to say it. I said that you wasn't looking to be aggressive, that you wasn't the Draymond of old. Yeah, you came out there and you handled your business tonight. You did your thing. No knock on that. But thinking I'm going to shut up or thinking whatever. Man, look, man, you can miss me with all that. I, I lip box and lip wrestle all damn day. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, boy. I don't give a damn about all that shit you talking about, man. You crazy as hell. You think you gonna shut me up? You gonna play with some of these other cats like that, man? Shit, you got the game f***ed up f-ing with Big Perp. Straight up. Carry on. He'll, oh, he'll, lip, he'll lip wrestle with anybody and... <laughs> 
Perk, uh, very few people in the history of basketball have gotten more off of uh, six points and six rebounds than Perk setting all those picks for Garnett and Pierce and uh, and Ray Allen. But what Perk was saying, criticizing Draymond Green's game, uh, he was right because Draymond was not great. Now his friend passed away. He's playing at the same time. That's a tough thing to deal with and, and play playoff basketball against a really good team. But until that elimination game, Draymond was not very good. He was great in the elimination game. The back and forth is entertaining. I'm not totally sure that Kendrick Perkins has ever heard the word ogre before or knows what ogre is. And I say that just because at the beginning of that sound, play it again. It sounded like he was confused. It sounded like he pronounced it improperly and then didn't know what it was. Hey, hey Draymond, man, let me let you in on this up, man. All that ogre and all that, whatever you say I look like, man, you ain't cute. You ain't handsome. There I, is an E at the end. It's confusing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, uh, the English theater. I I love it as beef, though, between the appearances of these, these two men. <laughs> I love the idea of Kendrick Perkins looking at Draymond Green and all of us walking away from both of them. Well, neither one of you are cute. Now, Boban. Adorable. I mean, and his dick. <laughs> 